Let me come to you, uh, Amanda. What is the specific mission of the Voice of America, an institution that you had? Voice of America is two things. One, it is the, and for some cases, the only source of reputable, fact-based, independent journalism and news in many, many parts of the world. It's also, for many parts of the world, it represents the very idea that a free press can exist. So you see in many of the countries we just, we just looked at that it, the free press does not exist. Without the Voice of America, no one has a model for what a free press could look like. How do you respond to some critics who say that on the contrary, you are looking at an institution that is a propaganda mouthpiece of the United States government? It's one of the wonderful things about Voice of America because while we are government funded, we are not government controlled. And we are completely separate from the U.S. government. And as a matter of fact, we're, we're separated by law. There is a very powerful set of laws that separate us that mean that we cannot and do not have to take direction from anyone else. And there also is, as you well know, a very powerful culture of independence and press freedom within Voice of America because many of the people that work here have come from places that don't have a free press and they know the difference. As a matter of fact, um, I sometimes, uh, you know, tell some of my uh, friends and critics that I am a very, very lucky guy <laughs> in the sense that uh, Voice of America pays me for doing some of the stuff that uh, I could otherwise have in fact done pro bono, <laughs> having dis discussions about issues that are pertinent to all of us. We're very, very lucky to be, to be here in a place where we can practice our profession freely and fully. Very interesting. Uh, so if in fact it is true, <clears throat> as you said and as I say, that we are an independent uh, international media organization, any particular reason, for example, why we are not broadcast, we are not seen, we do not interact with the Republic of Burundi? Well, we would love to do all of those things with the Republic of Burundi. But unfortunately, as you just saw, the government of Burundi has uh, essentially thrown us out along with the British Broadcasting Corporation. Both of us were, were you know, not permitted to broadcast inside Burundi together at the same time. So we think Burundi deserves to have the same access to free press that other countries do. So we would very much like to be back there. What about uh, their concern that uh, there is uh, an individual Burundian journalist uh, who works for the Voice of America, who in their words uh, participated in the 2015 failed coup, which was uh, uh, aimed at toppling the incumbent president uh, Pierre Nkurunziza and his government, and that that particular individual, as a matter of fact, is a subject of an arrest warrant. Well, we've asked for that arrest warrant and haven't yet seen it, so we're not sure what they're talking about. And that individual is a member in good standing of, of VOA's press, uh, press corps, and he's following all our regulations. He's practicing good journalism. We, don't ha we haven't seen anything that would say that there is anything whatsoever wrong with him working here. How do you find the Voice of America? You've been here for quite some time so far. I am so proud and so happy to be working here. I have a long journalistic career. I've worked at many, many large national news agencies, news organizations around the country. And I have to say that the passion that this inspires, both in me and in everyone else around, is just wonderful. If you could put your fingers on one thing, what is it, for example, that you would consider to be the single most important decision that you have made so far regarding the freedom of press? I think there's a couple of decisions. I can't point to one single one, but you mentioned the separation of the government, making sure that that, that 
issue stays in the forefront of everyone's mind here at Voice of America, that they cherish it and protect it the way it should be protected, that is the thing that distinguishes us from propaganda organs, the separation from government. So making sure that that is, is properly respected is one of them. And the other, I have to say, is working to um, open up the voices of the women that are in this building because you can't have a free country, a free democracy, if half the people in the world are uh, underrepresented or repressed. So I'd say those two things. What about uh, the single most important regrettable decision? You know, I hate to say this, but I have no, I have no regrets so far. It's been, it's been nothing, it's been nothing but wonderful. Really? Absolutely. When you compare the other institutions that uh, you worked for as a journalist, when you compare and contrast with the Voice of America, what would you say that you have learned from this particular institution so far that you probably uh, didn't see um, at the other places? I, I wish every journalist would have the opportunity to learn what I've learned because I learned at great institutions that had terrific standards and we really appreciated the freedom that we had, but none of us here in the United States appreciate that freedom enough. And I wish that other journalists would have the opportunity to see what I've seen and go to countries and see what a difference it makes when a country has a free press or when it does not. You can see that in a country without a free press, it is virtually impossible for democracy to exist. So for me, the appreciation of what I have has something that VOA has brought to me.